Okay, so this is my beautiful embellishing machine, which is my, my other best friend after my sewing machine. What I've done is I've put a piece of um, net, I don't know if you can see that, but I've put a piece of red net right across my piece of fabric with all the scraps on. Um, this machine has got 12 needles in here which do not have thread attached to them. It's not like a sewing machine. They're just simply very pokey needles. If any of you have done um, hand needle felting, it's exactly the same as that, but this is a machine that does it for me. And it's got 12 lovely needles in there which makes short work of um, any fabric that I put underneath. And obviously you can embellish it as much or as little as you want to. My intention is I'm going to embellish it so it's more or less stays in place and um, then I can take the net off and have a look at it. So I'm just going to set off with the machine. I've got my, it's got a press of foot, just the same as on the sewing machine, but I've, I make it so that um, this this uh, foot here allows me to slide the fabric around completely. So I'm going to set off now, it's a little bit noisy. sort of going up the middle of it to avoid the pins because the pins I do not want to embellish the pins It'll be very bad news but once I've got it sort of held in place I can start to take the pins out as a sewing machine you just have a presser foot and it um, it goes as fast as you want it to go it sounds a little noisy sometimes because depending on what fabrics you've got underneath the needles as to what sort of noise it makes you mustn't use any fabric that's too um, closely woven really I wouldn't use linen on it because I think it's too hard but you can use an awful lot of fabrics it's just really have an experiment and see. Okay, so I think that's probably held together enough now. Oops, let's lift the needles up and I can just peel off the net you see and underneath, look at that lovely, lovely piece of new fabric that we have created using all my bits of scraps. So you can see it's a bit rough around the edges here, so I can add some more little bits on there, but it just depends if I want to make something, you know, half that size, I can cut it in half. I could cut this into brooches. It's looking really fabulous. It's got a really nice mix of fabrics going on, which I hope you can see. Mesh it a little bit more. It's honestly, it's such fun. It really is. I can't mix paint for toffee, really. I find mixing paint and trying to paint things, you know, with arty things really quite stressful. But with fabric, because each colour is just a colour. It's an absolute colour. You can't change that colour of blue. You can't change that colour of green. But what you're doing is when you mix them together, you are creating something that pleases your eye. And that's all that it's about, really. So this, this set of colours, might somebody else might think that, oh, that's awful. That's really, I wouldn't use those colours. But I'm just playing with this to see how bright and dazzly I can make it really this afternoon because <laughs> it's a bit of a grey afternoon so um, and the other side which I just kind of showed you there you can see how the colours starting to come through there's even a bit of gold really really sticking up there depending on how soft the fabrics are and what they're made from as to how much of this you get coming through and the other thing you can do if you really don't like something on here you can just pull it off because it hasn't got any attachment it's not been stitched on and actually I don't know if you can see how nicely that's gone all spiky you can make use of that you could turn that over and stick it back on and you get a really nice texture to that piece of fabric by turning it over let me see see embellishing machines are just fantastic I have to say I know not everybody wants one but I think this is just brilliant it does so many good things for me 
So I'll show you that and I think what I'll do next is I'll take that over to my sewing machine and I'll do some free machining embroidery. I can't even say it now. <laughs> free machine embroidery on it and then you can see what I'm going to go with it next. Right, so here's my sewing machine. I've set it up for a free minute machine embroidery. I've put my darning foot on here. I don't know if you can see that, but it's basically a little um, oblong of plastic and the needle will go down through that plastic. I've lowered the feed dog teeth there. And in fact, you can see my poor old sewing machine. You can see how battered it is. I've had it such a long time, but it's my, my wonderful sewing machine. It just does everything for me that I could ever ask. I'm going to lower my top tension a little bit because that works best for my machine. And I'll put my stitch length to zero because, again, that's what I'm going to be controlling. Always put your presser foot down, whether you're free machining or not, because otherwise it'll knit up underneath the thread. It'll just become a big knot. So this is looking really lovely. It's, it's The embellish has done its job. It's put all the fabrics together. As I say, if you haven't got an embellisher, you could be stitching this through the soluble fabric that I showed you. And it won't have quite the same effect, but you'll get a nice mix. And by the time you've stitched on top, it'll look very nice. So I've got a nice bright green thread in the top and I'm just going to have some fun with free machine embroidery. If you haven't seen free machine embroidery before, it's basically you control, you're going to move the fabric and the, the needle will go up and down and put stitches and you will just enjoy the process of, I'll just get that out of the way. Just, I'm just going to do my simple circular, what's the word, circular motions. And I'm just really, if you can see that, I'm just kind of doing, it's almost like if you took a pen and you just scribbled on some paper. That's basically what I'm doing. I'm just kind of scribbling. There's absolutely no rules about free machine embroidery. You, let, you take the fabric where you want it to go and the machine does all the hard work. And you can see that's starting to hold things down. Just got to be a little bit careful here because one or two bits are still a bit loose. Sometimes with embellishing, it's not about making everything really, really flat. If you allow little bits of texture to stand up, that really makes a nice effect. Is the bit I really love is when you've got your fabrics all laid down and you've got a nice stiff bit of fabric underneath and all you need to do is let the machine run it's just so satisfying and so it's very relaxing even though it's a machine and it's quite noisy it's really very relaxing so I think what I'm going to do is I will change the top thread I'll put some different colors on and I'm going to work into this a little bit more and I'll show you it all when I've finished actually I decided I would show you a little bit more because I've put a darker thread on and I think it's easier to see now more of the more of the stitching that I'm actually doing and the looping round that I'm making and what you can also do is you can do lots of stitching in one place so you could do lots of ziggy zags like that and then do a bit of cross hatching you can do some, something like that you can, so it's like a really wild zigzag you can actually put your zigzag on your machine um, so this is now going to do a narrow zigzag stitch so it's just the same as when you no, no, do a um, if you're doing a zigzag stitch with your normal presser foot on but you've got control over it I don't know if you can see that but you you have control over how the spacing goes and the shaping goes and it's just honestly it's so brilliant if you haven't done free machine embroidery please do learn because it's just fantastic it's just so liberating so I'll take the zigzag off that and put my straight stitch back on just so you can see if I slow that right down you can actually see and you see the loops that I'm making. So you can make it as loopy as you like, or as ziggy zaggy as you like. So you're kind of 
just adding into the mix so all those fabrics have all sort of blended together and all those threads have blended together and now you're adding stitching which just adds into the mix so no one um, part of this is really standing out although you can make some of it stand out obviously I could do maybe I might do some zigzags in gold which would really stand out and that turquoise bit stands out a little bit so you're making some areas of it maybe stand out a little bit but really it's just all blending together and to make a harmonious whole and it's really it's really so cool to do so I'll get on with this and I'll show you it when it's finished I thought I would show you a close-up of this piece that I made because I think it's really lovely it's really worth having a close look at it. You can see all the different colours of stitching that I used and how all the different fabrics have blended together using the embellishing machine. It's just really fantastic. I just love doing this. And the beauty of this was it was just playtime. It was just using up all of those scraps that you don't quite know what to do with and they're far too nice to just go into the recycling. I'll perish the thought into the bin. The only snag is where do you stop because every bit that I make creates more scraps for the next bit of recycling which is really funny. I'll just show you the back of this because it shows you very nicely all the free machine embroidery on the back and you can see quite clearly what a mess it is. It's literally like if you took a pen and you were a three year old and you just scribbled everywhere. There's nothing high tech about it but what it is it's the combination of the fabrics and the, and the stitching and the colours and the textures and it all just comes together in one. Okay so I hope you enjoyed seeing my embellisher in action it's just such a fun machine and the free machining the two together just really work magic for me um, in everything that I do. I don't always use the embellisher but it really does as you saw it really does mix the fabrics up really very nicely and the funny thing is that if I cut the edges off this and sort of trim it up a little bit like this and I just snip off all these loose bits and if I then collect up, <laughs> if I collect up all the threads that I've snipped off from my stitching from using all the different colours, look at that, I've got more bits to put into a jar and keep to make my next project with. Next time I fancy getting my embellisher out and just having a bit of a play. Um, so you can see there, I hope, um, what it's created. All those different colours have blended together. It's a wonky piece of fabric. It's just really a scrap to show you. But you could, you could cut that into uh, circles or oblongs or something and turn that into little brooches. You could trim it down and it could become, I don't know, a piece of jewellery, a piece of something to put around your wrist uh, with a nice button on. Um, the back, I don't know if you can see the back there, that shows you all the machining that I did and um, it's really quite fun on the back as well. I think you should always turn things over, you never know what's on the back. It might well be better than the front. So I think that's enough for today and time to go make a cup of tea. So I hope you've enjoyed watching, I look forward to seeing you in my next video and who knows what that's going to be about. I look forward to seeing you again, bye for now.